Greetings from Black Video News, discussions with Professor Frederick Williams, also known as the Writer Fred. I have three new panelists this week, and I want to welcome you all to our discussion today. Uh, before I tell you the, what the discussion's about, let me introduce my panelists. To my right, I have attorney Chris Petard of Petard Law Firm here in San Antonio. Next to me, I have the beautiful Dr. Dorinda Rowe, a professor of Afro-American Studies at UTSA and also executive coach and professor. And to my left, I have the handsome, erudite William B. Johnson, businessman and social activist, ex, uh, I'm sorry, executive committee member of the NAACP, and William says he's a businessman and allows him to be a social activist. And that's what it's all about because it creates independence, doesn't it? And don't we need more of that? Sounds we need businessmen who are yeah. not depending on anyone else. And what we do is, you think about Black Wall Street in Tulsa, is we support our businessmen so they can have that kind of independence, sure. right? And it, it gets to our subject today because the folks we're going to talk about today don't have that independence. Mm -hmm. Well, I don't know if they know that independence. I don't think they know what power they have in a group. And we're going to talk about the kneeling down or sitting down of black football players and one white football player during the playing of the national anthem and the display of the flag. And we all know this started back in 2016 when uh, quarterback Colin Kaepernick from the San Francisco 49ers decided that he would make a statement about police brutality in this country and refuse to stand for the national anthem. That escalated and some other players started to do the same thing. I think this year it started to cool down again and then good old Trump <laughs> opened his mouth in Alabama. Yeah and made the statement to the coaches, what you need to do is one of those guys kneels down, fire the SOB. Mm -hmm. And I think that triggered the, uh, what we're seeing today. So we know that the coaches and the owners are in a tough position because the last thing they ever want is for united black ball players, since we're 75% of the league, to decide to do it. For example, if every Dallas Cowboy player, uh, Jerry Jones, we're going to get that, said, if you kneel, you're not going to play. Well, what if all those guys kneeled? He'd have to forfeit the, the football game, and he would lose it. And he's not going to do that. But the question is, uh, as Harry Edwards uh, mentioned years ago, in the 60s, blacks united because they knew they were oppressed. Mm -hmm. Today, blacks are divided because they know they're successful. And so we have a real problem. So with that said, let me get right to my first question to attorney Chris Petard, and I want to kind of make it somewhat, get this out of the way, the legal aspects of this. Uh, Chris is an employ employer, employment lawyer and civil rights. So the question to you, attorney Petard, if an employee is asked to perform a task out of their job description, can they be sanctioned for failing to do so? If not, isn't the owner's requirement for the players to stand during the national anthem outside their job description, and can they be forced to do so? Okay, let me, let me take the, the question in two parts. Okay, sure. Go right ahead. And in the first part, you ask, can an employee be sanctioned for failing to do a task that's outside their job description. Right. Now, the word failing to do something outside their job description can have a couple of different connotations. Okay. One is if they refuse to do something. And if they refuse to do something, then that might carry its own kinds of consequences. It depends on what the requirement is. If the employer is asking them to do something that's either immoral unethical or illegal, then they can refuse to do that task or perform that, that act, whether it's within their job description or not. However, if the employer is asking them to merely do something that is not within their job description and it's not immoral, unethical, or illegal, then yes, they may be required to do that task. Now, they may ask for additional training. They may ask for additional resources. They may ask for additional guidance on how to accomplish that task, mm -hmm. but they don't necessarily have the right to refuse to do the task 
because it's their employer that's asking them to do it. If they do refuse to do the task, then they may be cited for or disciplined for insubordination. And typically that's something that does happen on the job, is that someone will say, well, that's not something that I'm supposed to do. That's not something within my, my job description. And the employer says, well, I want you to do it anyway, because either we don't have the resources for someone else to do it, or we're, we're understaffed, or some other reason, and the employer is asking you to do it, even though it's outside your job description. If you refuse to do it, again, you could be counseled, you could be reprimanded, admonished, and potentially terminated for not performing that particular task. The other connotation of failing to do that type of task is if you actually attempt to do it and you're not successful. Then that's a performance issue. And as a performance issue, then there are other ways of potentially dealing with it which go to counseling, training, and so forth to train you how to do the task so that you are successful in doing it. Right. Mm -hmm. But the issue that I think we're really getting at here is whether the football players being told that they have to stand for the national anthem is being required to do a task outside their job description. Mm -hmm. Obviously, football players are there to play a game. They're there to play the positions on the field that they're assigned to do. And typically, you don't have a quarterback playing defense, and you don't have a you know, linebacker throwing the ball as a right. quarterback, yeah. okay? That, th those would be tasks outside their job right. descriptions, yeah. all right? But making them stand for the national anthem, I think, is, is, not, is not only outside their job description, it's, it's really outside kind of the norms of what we expect to be able to do when you're at the job. As an example, uh, let's say that you're at a job where they would like you to stand and recite the Pledge of Allegiance. You know, put your hand over your heart and recite yeah. the Pledge of Allegiance. Well, maybe not everybody wants to recite the Pledge of Allegiance, particularly if you know the history of the Pledge of Allegiance <laughs> and everything else. Right. You may not want to do that. Right. So rather than putting your hand over your heart, maybe you just stand there as opposed to doing that. Mm -hmm. uh, as an example, when the National Anthem plays, I stand at attention. Mm -hmm. uh, I'm former military, and that's how I pay my respects to the flag and to the, and to the country. Mm -hmm. Other people put their hands over their hearts. Mm -hmm. But does that mean I'm less patriotic than someone else when I do that if I'm standing at attention? I don't believe so. That's the way that I pay my respects. Yeah. Yeah. But if I don't believe in the, pl the Pledge of Allegiance, then I don't think that I would have to stand and recite it I may stand because I'm required to stand, but I'm, I don't know if I have to recite it. Now we're talking about potential First Amendment issues. And the First Amendment is a guarantee of American citizens not to have their rights of free speech infringed upon by the government. The key is the government. The key is the government. Congress shall not enact any laws that infringe on the rights of religion, association, free speech, free press. That's all part of the First Amendment. But when you're talking about a private employer, you're talking about something a little different because private employers are not bound by the Constitution in that respect. So they don't necessarily have to recognize your rights to free speech. Now, there's certain types of speech within the, the workplace that you can um, engage in. You can engage in speech that has to do with your job. You can engage in speech that has to do with potential discrimination um, or harassment, things like that, which you are allowed to talk about because those are protected statutorily. But you cannot necessarily go around saying things that may incite other people or cause other people to have uh, issues with what you're saying. So you don't have an absolute right to free speech when you're working for a private employer. The NFL and the teams are private employers, they're private associations. So they can enact those types of rules like the NBA has. Yeah. The NBA has had a rule that, that requires you to stand for the national anthem, they've had it for over 20 years. So to answer your question, can Jerry Jones require that? Or can an NFL owner require that? I think the answer is yes, they can require it. Now, what are the consequences to the players? That's a, dis that's a, that's a different yeah. question. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. okay, very good. Dr. Rowe. Yeah. Some commentators, and there is a book, Slave Side of Sunday, by Anthony Pryor, yeah. uh, publicly announced that any player, oh, I'm sorry, um, has written comparing the treatment of professional football players to slaves. Mm -hmm. Do you think that is a fair comparison? I don't. I, I don't think it's the same thing. I think that there probably are 
you could do some comparisons, but I don't think it's a fair comparison. Okay. The reason why is because pro athletes in the NFL, NBA, whatever, they choose to participate in that sport via a contract. Mm -hmm. Slaves did not choose to be, to be slaves, <laughs> at least not knowingly, right. at least not in this country. So I don't think it's a fair comparison. I, I think, you know, we all understand what a contract is. Yeah. You do something, I do something. And we mutually agree on that. Mm -hmm. And so now that this other issue has come up as a part of perhaps making one to break their contract, or as you stated, they're doing something that um, the owner says that you need to do this and you right. do it. So I don't, I don't think his um, comparison is fair. However, in his book, he talks about um, or he places the blame of what he calls a slave mentality for uh, pro athletes, at least in the M in NFL. And he places that blame on primarily parents who don't instill in young boys something other than the ability to play, play sports. sports, right? And he, he talks about them not exposing them to the sciences, the arts, uh, other literary opportunities that would have them to think about what they might do to bring them out of poverty or to bring them fame and fortune, whatever. So I don't, I don't necessarily agree with that either because some of the parents, and he even, I saw in a video mm -hmm. where he alludes to the fact that, you know, you have some mothers in these impoverished areas, mm -hmm. they don't have the wherewithal to even think about what else their child may be able to do and they don't consider that you can develop the mind the same way that you develop the body. Mm. So, no, I, I don't think that that's a fair comparison. I, and I've heard other people um, make that comparison as, as well. And again, I, I think it's that freedom of choice. Mm -hmm. I want the money, I want the fame, so you do right. what they tell you to do. Otherwise, you sit around the table like we do, where you decide <laughs> to do what you want to do. Yeah, yeah. Interesting, because he also talks in that book about a moratorium. I'd like to come back to that where he thinks there should be a moratorium on all sports in all black communities where they can't play basketball, football, and all they can do is go to the library and study so that we can break that trend of every mother thinking that their son's going to be the next LeBron James. But we can come back to that. Let's come back to that one. Okay. <laughs> Mr. William Johnson, right. sir. The Dallas Cowboys owner Jerry Jones has publicly announced that any player and the Cowboy team that doesn't stand for the national anthem will not be allowed to play that day. How should the players on the team react to such a dictatorial demand? Well, uh, that's almost like a hot potato, Professor, quite <laughs> frankly. First of all, it's easy you know, for me to say you know, that uh, they should uh, do this, that, and the other. However, uh, the reality is uh, that's the source of their livelihood, and that's certainly going to enter the picture. However, I would hope that uh, the young fellas who are playing the sport, making big bucks, as far as I can tell, my son said something to the fact some of them make, uh, pick up a check every Tuesday, he says, for 85 or 90,000 bucks. That's not bad, and if you have any kind of good sense at all, you should be able to live reasonably well on a lot less than that, although I don't know what they're doing with their money, but you know, back to the point. Our people have made sacrifices down through the years, black people in this country, for various reasons, various causes. Mm -hmm. And I think it's time that uh, we as a people understand that sometimes freedom is worth something. It's worth a sacrifice sometimes, and uh, I'm, I'm for one who's not afraid to embrace the approach that yes, there will be some inconveniences periodically along the way uh, for all of us. And I don't know, many of these young folk, folk probably may not appreciate the sacrifices that have been made mm -hmm. by people like Muhammad Ali, for example. He's one that they may be familiar with, but there's been many, many others. Mm -hmm. Some folk have been killed as a result of the risks that they've taken down through the years. Right. So I don't think that they should be risk averse simply because they're living a good life. Mm -hmm. I think it's time that they belly up to the bar and pay some, be prepared to pay some kind of price for the freedoms and the ability to even earn those big bucks. Mm -hmm. There was a time when uh, 
there was not that opportunity. Of course, uh, the powers that be figured out that, hey, these guys are good at running and tackling and even throwing the ball now, even coaching now. Mm -hmm. they, they can do that, so they're doing it. However, there comes a time, and I think this may be the time, when I would like to see the folk pull together, particularly when you have power. You mentioned something to the effect 70% perhaps, 65%, that's a pretty good percentage. Gee, 75%. It's, it's no way we're going to get them all together. Look at us. We, you know, but however, you can get a substantial number, I would hope, together in order to impact. Let's, let's, let's try it and see what happens. So I would mm -hmm. love to see them do that, you know, really. But understand that sacrifices have been made in the past for them to be where they are. And I would love to see them stand up and do no less. However, to answer your question, point blankly, if it were me, I would say, I would think long and hard about uh, being an example, you know, but depending upon how you're made. I came from a place that uh, I, would, I would give some real consideration to standing up and just becoming a whatever, martyr, if you will, or whatever, you know, for the cause. I think there's something to be said for that. Okay, okay. Let me stay with you for a second. Okay. If you don't mind. All right. Yeah. It, it, it seems to be one of our problems is that we, we have a tendency to always put money over race. Absolutely, yeah. And when you look at the people who do that, I think they do some damage uh, to the totality of the race. Mm -hmm. And when you mention that, it made me think about Dick Gregory and Bill Cosby. Okay. Dick Gregory could have made all the money Bill Cosby made, but he made the sacrifice. Okay. Cosby made all the money. Uh -huh. uh, O.J. Simpson mm -hmm. and Muhammad Ali. Okay. Well, Muhammad Ali was good enough to come back. Mm -hmm, but sure. if he hadn't been able, O.J. was running through airports oh, yeah. making money Big bucks. And, and rejecting. In fact, uh, in the movie on O.J., they say, you need to get a black attorney. And he says, why? I'm mm -hmm. not black. I'm O.J. Sure uh -oh. did. More yeah. than one time. I saw the same movie. <laughs> O.J. made in America. Yeah. yeah. He said, oh, no, I'm not black. Okay. So, of course, he, he realized he's black <laughs> after they sure, wanted sure. to hang him. Oh, okay. Then okay. he wanted every black person in the country yeah. Yeah. Uh, supporting him. And I'm so, yeah. <laughs> I think we all did uh, because I don't think we really had yeah. much of a choice. Yeah, I, know. Yeah. I, I think it was a sense of justice, but that's sure. another issue. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, how, how do you, any of you can well, hear think, on this money I, over I wanted race. to talk about one, one thing that you said, or at least you used the term we several times. And I think one of the issues that we have today is that, and I'm referencing this from sure. the young people that I teach on a weekly basis at the university who are like between 18 and 25. Right. So they're young. Mm -hmm. They don't have a sense of the history of this country, of the overt racism, although they're getting a taste of it from the now videos that they are able to see on sure, social sure. media. But I think, you know, Africans come from, or Africa is a collective society, meaning yeah. that they think in terms of we, us, our. Sure, sure. And I think in America, our young people have bought in to this me, myself, and I. Yeah. Right, so to get them all to say, okay, if this is the Sunday, they are saying we have to stand up and not kneel. I think it would be very difficult to get the majority of the players to say, we're going to do this, because they're thinking, as you said, their livelihood. You know, I, I can't put this at risk. I have all these people depending on me. No, I'm not going to do it. I'll just go ahead on and stand up and do what they tell me. But if we could get them all to say, no, we're, we're not going to, we're not, we're going to kneel. We're not going to stand because this issue is, it's not about respect. And that's the thing I think that has bothered me so much okay. is that, you know, once the president got involved and with everything that's going on, I don't know how he found time to even consider any of this. But I thought about, um, there's a book that I, I like to read. It's called The 48 Laws of Power by Robert Greene. And one of the quotes in the book, I think about this often when I hear things that president, the president, I don't want to say his name, um, mentions, but one of the quotes is, keep people off balance and in the dark by never revealing the purpose behind your actions. And I'll include the, the term words in there. If they have no clue what you're up to, they cannot prepare a defense. Guide them far enough down the wrong path, envelope them in enough smoke, and by the time they realize your intentions, it will be too late. So now, you see, we've got everybody focused on this, oh, it's disrespecting the flag. 
And it's not about disrespecting the flag at all. And so that's, you know, I try to keep my mind and my focus on what is this really about? Right. Yeah. Well, let me, let me, let me shoot over here for a second. Um, one thing I want to say about, you know, one okay, thing I want to say about uh, Williams' comments about sacrifice and that the black players may not have any symbols of that sacrifice historically. Well, there's one, they don't have to look too far back, okay. and that's Colin Kaepernick. Mm -hmm. Where is he right now? Not playing. He's not playing. And everyone is saying, of course, he's not been blackballed by the NFL owners, but of course he is. Mm -hmm. You can't tell me that there are 32 or 96 yeah. players that are better than Kaepernick at his position. They're not. But he's not been given a position or a job. Why is that? Because of his sacrifice from last year, his kneeling down, the only one at, at one time. Because why? Their white fans don't like it. Their white advertisers don't like it. They don't want him to play. And they've, they've gotten all kinds of uh, letters and death threats and everything else about if you let Callum Kaepernick play for this team, we're going to leave the team. So, yeah, there is your sacrifice right there. All the black players have to do is see that. Look what happened to him, okay? We don't want that to happen to right. us. Yeah. And they don't have to go too far back. They don't have to go back as far as Muhammad Ali or, or Kurt Flood or anybody else. Colin Kaepernick is right there in front of him. Yeah, and I will give you that. That is, so if we talk about a slave mentality, one of the things, of course, that the slave owners did to keep all the rest of them check, will beat one into an inch of his life. Yeah. And that'll keep the rest of them like, oh, I don't absolutely. want that to happen to me, so yeah, yeah. I'm not gonna do that. Yeah, absolutely. absolutely. I don't yeah. believe uh, uh, Colin is, uh, is broke necessarily. I think he's oh, no, he's rich. money. Yeah. And, and he, I'm hoping that the other guys have lived their lives in such a way that they aren't totally broke. You know, 10 and 12 cars and this lifestyle can sometimes Cause yeah. you end up, uh, you know, yeah. slave to uh, what you thought you had coming. So I'm hoping that they've used good sense, which is doubtful. But but I'm getting a little tired though of everyone when we protest. You know, they use the word it's political. You know, and, and they use it in a, in a negative sense. I mean, uh, the women's march after the election of uh, '45 uh, was done, and I didn't hear the word political at all. You know, used around on that. Yeah. So this country. It's selective about what it says about whom, and, and we have to understand that really, whatever we do, you know. So we, we could uh, stand, kneel, whatever. Uh, it, it doesn't really, it's not about that. It's racially driven, I believe, their thoughts and ideas, mm -hmm. and, and it's just, just, just <laughs> simple as that. And until we really face up to that, and as a people come together, in a collective sense, start moving in a direction that's in our best interest as a people and stop allowing others to keep us divided based upon something that's really either non-existent or it's not, not important at all. So, okay. you know, okay. yeah, yeah, but. Uh, yeah. Yeah. Chris, you mentioned that you can refuse to do something if you think the act you're doing is immoral, unethical, or illegal. What if I feel for me to salute a flag that has oppressed my people since they've been here is almost like an immoral act on my part? That's a subjective belief. Well, isn't, isn't immorality a subjective? Not necessarily. Um, as an example, if, if I'm asked to do something that really is kind of outside the, the, the boundaries of, of, of our moral norms. Um, and I, I, I can't think of an example off the top of my head that, that fits that. It fits that um, murder? Well, no, no, no. no murder is, is obviously illegal. Uh, it's, and it's more than just immoral or unethical. But um, if I'm, I'm, I'm trying to think of something right off the top of my head. Mm -hmm. but. The fact that you believe that the flag somehow symbolizes the oppression of the black man in America and then by standing up and um, staying in attention while the national anthem is being played is an immoral act, I think you're going to have problems making that argument in the long run if you use that as your defense because it doesn't, it's not outside the boundaries of our moral norms, norms okay? okay. Um, something that might be, for instance, if they had uh, a different flag up, 
Uh, I'll give you an example real quick on that one. We play the national anthem at various tournaments that I, that I participate in in bowling. Right. One time, they didn't have the American flag in there. Mm -hmm. They had, and we had participants there from Mexico. Okay. They had the Mexican flag up there. Mm -hmm. And they were going to play the American national anthem mm -hmm. with people standing and looking at the, Me at the Mexican not, flag. Yeah. I walked out. Yeah, that's not mm -hmm. I walked out. I said, I, I, can't, I can't be no. in here for this. I cannot no. stand no. and honor the flag of another country right. while they're playing my national anthem. Mm -hmm. Okay, I thought that was uh, either yeah. immoral or unethical somehow. Right. Okay, okay? Right. so that because that was outside to me right. the boundaries of, of our societal norms because okay. I was going to pay homage to a, a flag sure. that was not mine <laughs> sure. while they're playing my my right. national anthem. Okay, yeah. and I could not believe how many people stood there and just looked at me. Oh yeah, you know, put their hands on the heart. Like, are you crazy? <laughs> <laughs> but and that's not what I why, why I served in the military was for uh, that. So right. that's an example that comes to mind along okay. the same lines. Is that I thought that was uh, somewhat out of the, the boundaries. Right. Okay. But standing up and, and looking at our own flag during the national anthem, I'm not sure if that's going to uh, fit that uh, model. Okay. Uh, may I? Yes, sir. You Go know, ahead. ultimately though, the flag is is just a symbol. You know, it represents all these nice things, justice for all, and what have you. Do we have justice for all in America? I mean, who really, who, who black that's uh, lived here a while believe that we have justice for all? It's ridiculous. I mean, it's yeah, false. Yeah. So if, if we've experienced a different America than the rest of the folk, it should be obvious that we're going to react differently to this symbol that Absolutely. represents all this, right. all this good stuff. However, on the other side, they can't understand it. We're being political and we're being the bad guys, but uh, I, I don't know how we can get around this because those people really, really believe you're defaming they the do. flag right. in America. You hate yeah. America. I'm a vet yeah. as well. Air Force vet, yeah. but I have good sense. And I, right. I do hear people say, yes, we understand that there's racism and injustice. Okay. And we don't mind you protesting, but not that way. Yeah. Oh. Do, do it a different way. They're going to select way. the way, way that you do it. Nice and clean. It bothers the sensitivities of the white fans. Right. Yeah. Therefore, exactly. we don't want to do, do that. that. Exactly. You, you, you good little black that. boys. You're supposed to do what we tell you to do. And, absolutely. And this yeah. is not what we, we want Very you to do. And right. this is absolutely. And that's what Jones told them they're going to do. Yeah, Black boys, you're going to behave or you're not going to play. Oh, I would love to see them stand up. Well, me too. Yeah. I mean, all of them, not just two or three, but all of them up. kneel down together and yeah. stay there. Yeah, I'm, 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 so I'm yeah. What would he do? <laughs> I mean, I don't know, but I'd love to see that happen. Yeah. So, but this is what I'm confused about. Only a week before, wasn't that Jerry Jones on his knees he was. holding everybody's hands? He was. Hands? Prior to the national anthem. Prior to the national anthem. Very true. Very true. Very true. Very Prior true. to the national anthem. It meant nothing. But it had some significance for well, it, I think. It to have To have Jerry Jones, this billionaire, do that. I think it meant. Something. An elderly billionaire man doing that. I mean, come on. I think it was a like cop out. Well, I give him a little bit of credit. I, 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 I give him some credit for that I as well. Do, Fred, I give him none at all. I really do. I give him none at all. Absolutely none. It okay. meant nothing. All right. It meant all right. nothing all right. Uh, to me. But we're about out of time. So before we close, uh, let's start over here. Sure. One minute to wrap it up, please, sir. Okay. This has been an excellent discussion uh, with. Uh, Various, well, we, we pretty much uh, sang the same tune on most of it. I appreciate the invitation, Fred, and I think uh, we should, hopefully you will continue to Absolutely. provide these kinds of opportunities for folk to come in and talk about issues of the day. It's so, so important. Right. I'm hoping folk are watching who will be informed and uh, at least uh, give them something to think about if they okay. really hadn't thought about this. Appreciate okay. it. Sure. Dr. Rowe, take yes. a minute to so, wrap up. You know, what, what I really am... Um, I probably am on the outlier on this, but as they're, you know, telling the other fans, you know, if they kneel, get up and walk out, I, yeah, I right. would like for them to all walk out and leave. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Because to me, that brings more attention to what this issue is about, and hopefully it'll get beyond disrespect of the flag. That's what I really would like to see. Okay. I wish okay. no black people would even watch any of the games, games. as okay. our protest as well. Okay, okay. okay. All right. Mr. It's unfortunate that Trump has changed the narrative. He plays to his base, and that's why he does most of what he says and does. Okay. And that's unfortunate. Okay. Okay. Yeah. Okay. Thank you all for this very invigorating uh, discussion. And two weeks from now, we will have another discussion at Black Video News on discussions with Professor Fred Williams, also known as the writer Fred. <laughs>
Very good. Perfect. Good.